Hey, and welcome to another devlog. There's a lot to cover this time, so let's dive right in. First off, as some of you mentioned in the last devlog, I used casts and blueprints and yeah, you should always try not to use them. Simply put, the problem with casts is that they create hard references, which means that an asset depends upon another asset. This leads to the problem that if an asset with a hard reference is loaded, the asset it depends on is also loaded into memory. If you use many casts, this can lead to performance issues, so you should use interfaces if you can, because they don't create hard references. I knew that beforehand, but I had to figure out how to really use interfaces, but now the casts are fixed. You can find a link to a good explanation of casts and interfaces and when to use them in the comments. And there are some new weapons. The game now has two morning stars, two two-handed maces, a man catcher and of course the two two-handed swords. Every weapon has their own moveset, idle and walk animation. The Morning Star, for example, has faster but weaker attacks than the two-handed weapons. Looking at the two-handed mace, this gets quite obvious. The light and heavy attacks of the two-handed mace will take much longer to be delivered. As mentioned in the combat devlog, I want to balance the weapons with the help of animation timings. Basically, weapons like the two-handed maces will deal much more damage in one hit, but the animation windup will take more time. All these animations are from the Unreal Marketplace. I slightly edited them so they would better fit to the weapons they are used for. But I also noticed the root motion on some of these animations is not how I want it to be. In these cases the root bone just copies the movement of the pelvis. This will lead to chittering in the camera movement and I don't want that. Normally, the root bone would only be animated in the forward direction on a text like this to have a smoother camera movement. I'll have to adjust the root bones on these animations, so I need to figure out a good way of doing that that will not cost too much time. Of course, there were the usual hiccups with animations. What? What the After the new weapons were in, I wanted to add more building parts. I made some of them a while ago, but they didn't really fit anymore because the size of the stone walls changed, so they needed to be adjusted. I also made some stairs, railings, wood beams, doors and some furniture assets. Of course the furniture is destructible. The doors are also destructible, so the player can breach them to get access to some locations. But this is a bit buggy at the moment because the doors keep getting stuck in the doorway. There needs to be a directional force to the impact so the debris of the door will get flung out of the doorway. But you can go through the destroyed doors already. Now buildings can be made modularly which is pretty nice to make many different buildings from the same assets. As I made some buildings I encountered a wrong pixel on the textures. After a while I found out that Affinity Photo, which I'm using to create textures, has a very specific bug with TGA textures, which will lead to red and blue values getting swapped in the corners of the textures when they are exported. This bug is super annoying and I will have to redo some of the textures I'm using, which is also a bit annoying. The reason why I used TGA textures in the first place was because Unreal does not like 16-bit PNGs and I only recently found out that 8-bit PNGs work fine, so I will switch back to them. But now let's talk about the game design of Calamity and what my vision for the game is. Describing the game in one sentence would sound something like this. Calamity is a retro third-person action RPG with a loot-focused progression system centered around dying, looting and combat in a dark fantasy world inspired by Berserk, Dark Souls and Diablo. One-liner like this are there to give a brief overview of what the game is, so it can be categorized more easily. This helps people to faster find out if they are interested in the game or not. For example, the description of Calamity would probably not catch the interest of someone who likes to play building or management games. But these one-liners often only scratch the surface of what the game is about, 
and the more detailed and nuanced differences are getting lost. So let's have a more detailed look at the game design behind Calamity. The core mechanics can be summarized in three points and we can directly see where the main influences are coming from. Now I use polymerization to fuse them together. The game will try to combine a Dark Souls-like combat system with Diablo-like loot, um, especially Diablo 2-like, because I think the item stats there are straightforward and easy to understand, which is good design. And this will be wrapped in a Tarkov-like extraction-based progression system, which is basically a roguelite system. Which means if you die, you will lose your gear, but you will keep the experience or level that your character gained. And of course, you can save your gear in the hub area. Now let's go into the nitty and gritty of the gameplay loop. The overall gameplay loop can be split into two independent loops to get a better understanding of it. The first one is the meta game loop. This describes the whole game and kind of what the players will go through in a play session. The other one is the moment to moment gameplay or sometimes also called one minute of gameplay. This loop shows what the actions of the players are in any given moment. Or in other words, the things the players will mainly do in the game. Splitting these two apart lets you better analyze your game flow and helps finding potential flaws in your game design. So let's look at the meta game loop of Calamity. If you start the game, you will always find yourself in the hub area. Here the players can gear up with their found loot, level up and also interact with merchants. I want the hub area to feel safe but at the same time alive with merchants and quest givers. For me Dark Souls 2 did a very nice job of achieving this feeling with Majula. To achieve this feeling of being a lively area the plan is to add NPCs that sometimes will move to the hub area if you encounter or help them on your journey. This will then unlock new traders or new quests. The next step is to choose a mission in the hub area. These missions can be found on the mission board or sometimes from NPCs in the hub area, a bit like it is in Monster Hunter. The missions will reward you with money or items and they will always give experience. The money can then be spent at merchants to acquire new gear. Activating a mission is optional, so you also can enter a map without any active missions to just explore or loot. After you've geared up and selected a quest, it is time to enter one of the maps. The game will have different maps or levels which players will have to unlock. At the beginning there will only be one map unlocked. Every map will have its own boss, defeating this boss will then unlock the next map. What I'm not sure about at the moment is how I will approach enemy level scaling if you have beaten a map. I don't want it to be that if you are on the second map the items of the first map are useless and it does not make sense to farm items there anymore. Maybe I will raise the enemy level to the equivalent of the boss level that you just defeated. But this is a topic for another time and needs to be playtested in the end. After you entered the map your goal is to find new loot, finish a quest, kill the map boss or find new merchants and extract from the map without dying. Players will lose all their gear and loot upon death, so you really don't want to die. If you successfully extract from the map or die, this game loop will repeat itself. Let's now talk about the moment to moment gameplay loop. This gameplay loop is kind of the backbone of the game which holds everything together. One main focus of the game is exploration. Coming into a map players will see specific points of interest in the distance. These will hopefully tempt them to go and explore these locations. While exploring the players will encounter enemies. Now they have a decision to make. Fight them to get loot and experience but risking to die and lose all your gear and loot or to flee and not fight them at all. After that the players will loot. Either the slain enemies or points of interest they have discovered. Every point of interest will also have loot that is accessible without fighting enemies. Maybe you have to lure them away but you don't have to fight them. Through this design I want to kind of introduce low risk loot runs so players who explore and memorize the map are getting rewarded. They now can go into the map with minimal gear and try to find some loot at the locations they memorized without risking higher valuable gear. 
The next step would be completing quest objectives and or finding new quests in the map. This is also optional because it depends on if you have an active quest or if you want to interact with a new quest giver in the map. After that the moment to moment gameplay loop will repeat itself. The metagame loop combined with the moment to moment gameplay loop kind of summarizes the overall gameplay of Calamity. So yeah, if you didn't like anything I mentioned this game probably isn't something for you. But yeah, let's also quickly talk about the weapon system and how abilities and leveling will work in the game. There won't be skills or abilities through leveling your character. Skills and abilities will be directly tied to the weapon or equipment you are using. This also means that there won't be specific classes for the main character. You will decide how you play by what items you are wearing. As mentioned in the combat devlog, attacks are composed out of light and heavy attacks. If you equip a sword with a special ability, the heavy attack will get replaced with that special ability, but the light attack stays the same as the light attack of every sword of that weapon type. Another option of dealing with special attacks would be to add a new attack if a weapon has a special ability, so the players would have light, heavy and special attacks. This is how Elden Ring is doing its combat for example. To find out what feels best, this has to be playtested at a later stage. The players can also level up their character and this progress will not be lost upon death. Leveling up will reward you with skill points that can be invested in specific stats like strength, dexterity, intelligence and vitality. These stats will give slight bonuses on weapon and armor types and in some cases raise attributes like health. Lastly, let's talk about the story of the game. Calamity will be mainly focused on gameplay and there won't be a directly told story at first. At the moment I'm writing the backstory of the game, like why is the world in ruins, what happened before that and what is the Oath of Despair. But all of this will mainly get told over environmental storytelling and maybe some short quests, but these quests will be added very late in development. Everything I mentioned sounds like a shit ton of work and it is. But that's at least for now what I want the game to be when it's done. This will take a lot of time and I'm certain that some parts of that will change over time in the developing process because every game design document or game design in general is evolving over time while you work on the game. Unfortunately this also includes cutting some stuff. But as you have might noticed, every part of the game is kind of modular, which will help hugely while making the game. What do I mean by that? The different maps or levels are not depending on one another, which means if one is done, it can be released and added to the game. Also, quests, new merchants and NPCs can be added individually, the same goes for weapons and items. But how long will all of this take? Um, to get the game ready for early access and I'm sure I will regret this estimation at some point because it's, it's really hard to estimate the development time of a games project. But I think I would need about two years of full time work to get it to early access. This sounds like a lot of time but well making games takes a lot of time and also the other thing is if the game goes into early access, I also want to deliver something to the players, which means I want one map to be completely ready and the game should have at least around 6 hours of gameplay. While I was writing the script it got bigger and bigger, so I decided to not go into too much detail on some specific topics. For example, I have a specific idea of how the loot system should work and also how random events or NPCs in the maps should work. I will cover these in later devlogs. Speaking of devlogs, the next one is planned for mid-September or maybe a bit later because my August is already quite planned out. I'll take one week off to go to a music festival, which I'm really excited about. And after that I will be at Gamescom. I'm there with Osmotic Studios who will show the game Closer the Distance, which I also worked on last year as I worked for them. So yeah, if you are at Gamescom and want to say hi, come by the Indie Arena booth and look for Closer the Distance. That's probably where I'll be most of the time. And yeah, that's it for now. See you in the next devlog.
Day, 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 day. I have to fix that. <laughs>